Welcome back to the show. We are here live from the Jersey Shore. This is Jean Marie, your host of the Hero Whispers. Thanks for joining us today. I am the Chief Supergirl of Supergirls.com. That's two L's, second L for love. And just in case it's your first time tuning in, just a little 411 about what we do. We inspire and empower college girls to launch from college to life. What does that mean? We give them all the tools they need to navigate the real world because college is awesome, but there's such a disconnect between what we learn in college and what we need to survive in the real world. So that's what we do. We talk to amazing women like the one we have today, Denise Gorillo kajerski uh, I'm going to go more into her in a minute. You're going to hear about her amazingness. But that's what we do at Supergirls. The Hero Whispers gives us a chance to really explore these awesome stories of women out there really killing it in the world, including the college women themselves. But today we have, our show is titled Mama Knows Best. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Denise. Um, Denise is, and I go way back, we actually went to high school together, if you can believe that one. <laughs> Denise, Welcome to the show. I want to read a little bit about your bio, but I just want to welcome her to the show because she is so fabulous and she doesn't go anywhere without her amazing and beautiful dog, Roxy. <laughs> is Roxy this with is us true. on the show today? <laughs> you know, she is. I have, I'm in behind a closet, so she doesn't make too much noise, but she's right behind the oh, closet. Oh, <laughs> awesome. It won't be the same without Roxy. So Denise right. is a... <laughs> She is a former television producer for CBS Television's Morning Show. She is a mom to two kids, a 21-year-old son who is a senior attending the University of Alabama, and a 16-year-old daughter who is a senior at Wilton High School in Wilton, Connecticut. Denise is a firm believer if you put your mind to something, you can achieve it. She has been married for 32 years and says she is the one that keeps the family organized. Denise has managed her kids' careers, who both are actors and appeared in numerous television and print ads from the time they were babies and are still working in the industry today. She has always been one to stay in shape and hates to work out. As a matter of fact, she says <laughs> losing weight is 90% of what we put in our mouths. Words to live yes, by. Yes, that's true. <laughs> she has learned how to stick with a low-carb diet to help her shed 20 pounds while in quarantine, she also says networking is a way to open doors that normally are hard to open. And by being persistent and confident in a charming way, it's amazing where it can get you. So happy you're here to share your stories because they are just victorious and brilliant. And everyone needs to know these nuggets that you have. Well, right, well, I love you. You got, and you made me sound so good, and I love you for that. But uh, there are many tools when you get out of college that they don't, like you said, they don't really teach you in college. So you have to know, and I, I always, I am a firm believer of networking. I mean, no matter if it's someone who knows somebody or anybody, the worst they could say is no. And I, I always tell my kids and I tell my husband, you got to ask for the order. You got to ask in life. Otherwise, you'll, you'll kick yourself for not asking. Well, how do they know you need it or want it? Unless you just open your mouth, well, that, right? The mouth that you're it, not putting it, your food in. <laughs> that, 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 the mouth that I'm not putting any food in, I talk a lot. So that works out really well. But uh, I'll, I'll start with my son, who is a, a senior now at the University of Alabama. And two summers ago, not this past summer, the summer before, I was invited to a golf tournament. I'm a big golfer, as G knows. I come from a family of golfers. So a friend of mine invited me to this golf tournament that was um, run by the Yankees, the New York Yankees. So, of course, I was like, yeah, I'll go. So we get there, and you play with one of the old Yankee members, and you do the whole 18 holes of a scramble, and then afterwards, there's a, a, a dinner. So we get to this dinner, and amongst these, you know, Yankee players are a lot of the advertising executives, the managers. I mean, it was like a whole whole room filled with these important people. So we're sitting there and we're eating and 
uh, believe it or not, one guy had a little dog with him. And of course, I didn't take my dog that day because I was on the golf course and you know I knew I probably couldn't. And I went up to the, this man and I started talking and come to find out he is the one that does all the coordination for the Yankees. He's in charge of the marketing department, everything. So we got to talking and I said to him, I said, you know, his name was Charlie. I said, you know, Charlie, I have a son who is a junior this year, but next year he will be looking for an internship. I said, anyway, you could help him out. He's like, sure, of course I could. You know, let me give you my email and my phone number. And, you know, you contact me in a year from now when he's ready. And I'm like, Charlie, I'm going to hold you to this. He's like, absolutely. I said, you're not going to forget who I am. He's like, no, 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 no. You're not forgettable. (laughs) I am not forgettable. But anyone could be not forgettable, really. You just got to. You got to do the talk. You got to walk the walk and anyone could be not forgettable. So we leave the tournament and I get home and I tell my husband, I call my son because he was, I think he was still in school at that time. I think it was like in maybe um, April or May. He was still, he was still in college. And I called him up. I said, look, I met this guy from the Yankees. He said, next year, when you're ready, he'll, he'll talk to you about an internship. And he's all excited. So that was it. So couple months go by and I I never reached out and then he he actually reached out to me to ask my wanted Yankee tickets or anything and I said you know we're good for now but I'll let you know and I and we, we we talked back and forth maybe twice so now TJ starts his senior year and it's um September or like mid-September and I, I didn't realize this but kids are starting to look for their internships end of September early October for the following summer so it's crazy. Uh, so TJ started. It's crazy. I mean, you really have to look. Everything's like a year in advance. So TJ's, you know, trying to network himself, and he knows a friend. He knows a friend. He's he's doing it on his own. He's he's getting to know some people and stuff. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna call Charlie that I met at that golf tournament. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Would you do that for me? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I emailed Charlie. You know, I, again, I haven't talked to him in a couple of months. And I sent a picture because, of course, I took a picture with him because I wanted to remember who I was. <laughs> and I, I emailed him and I said, I hope you remember me. I said, we had a conversation and my son is now looking for an internship. You know, I under, you know, you know, again, you know when to be nice. And you just say, I understand if you can't do anything, no worries. But if you have someone you could send me or, or hook him up with, you know, we so appreciate it. Well, immediately he got back to me and was so kind and so nice. And he said, have him send his resume over to me. Let me see what I could do for you. So immediately I got off the phone, contacted TJ, said, get your resume together, you know, do what you got to do and send it to me. So he sent it over to me and we forwarded it to Charlie. And Charlie set him up with about five different interviews, five different interviews for an internship. One was be, he works for the Yes Network. He said at the time they had no interview, you know, internships at the Yet Network, but he deals with uh, something called Sound Communications, which is a huge um, manager advertising agency in Manhattan. And he said they do all our advertising, and the guy, you know, would, the owner of the company would really be interested in uh, speaking with him. So he, now that's all I did. I, I set the ball rolling. It was up to my son to get it from there. So he um, sent over his resume. He got a call saying they would like to do uh, an interview, um, you know, a, a voice-to-voice interview while he was at Alabama. This is all while he's still at school. And in, but prior to this, he had already done like three intern- interviews for internships. And he said it's hard. They ask you like, you know, questions that you, you're not quite prepared for and you have to think off the top of your head. And so this was his third interview so he was a little more prepared when it came to this one because he he kind of figured out what questions they were going to ask him and and he you know of course google now with today's day and age with with how the internet works you can google anything so the fact that he had this whole company at his fingertips and knew what they did knew what they were looking for obviously is a huge advantage when gene obviously when you and i were looking for jobs we had none of that no we didn't but i I, but i what i love about you is that you, uh, you know, you push this process and these kids need to realize like oh. it's all about who you know. And I want to know, you got a, a major job at a major network. I mean, you Correct. are a force. And so let's hear I some of that wisdom. I am a force to be reckoned with. 
<laughs> you you are. I am a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, again, that too was due to networking, if you could believe it. Back in, we're going back, I graduated in 1986. Now, at the time, I, I went to school for communications and journal, I minored in journalism. And at the time, that field was very small. And I remember, I, I went to Quinnipiac, so it was a small college anyway, but there was probably maybe 200 kids in that field. Now it's a huge program at Quinnipiac. And I remember when I left college, I was the only one working in my field. And once again, networking, my father being a golfer, I was explaining how I was in the golf family. He um, says to me after I was graduating, he goes, you know, I met this, I know this guy. He didn't really know him well. He goes, but he works for CBS magazine. You know, I told him you were a communications major looking for a job at a network, and he said to give him a call. So I'm like, okay, Dad, thanks. That's great. You know, so <laughs> back back in the day, you call up. You know, you don't you don't either. There was no email. There was no <laughs> texting. Exactly. So I called up and I spoke with his secretary, and she took me and she said, no problem. He'll see you. And we made an appointment, and I had to go in to meet with this guy. So now I knew CBS had three divisions. They had magazines. They had television and they had radio. And I knew I wanted television. I didn't want magazines, but I figured, you know what? It's a start. Let me just get my foot in the door. And that's what it's all about, ladies and men, getting your foot in the door. Once you get in the door, it's up to you to create your destiny. I mean, it's really up to you. And it's funny because my husband always says, I'll get back to my story, but my husband always says, college, one is for education, two is to have fun, and three, to get your first job. And basically, it's true. You want to get that job that you can move yourself up into. No, we so love anyway, Tommy. So I, Tommy's awesome. Tell Tommy, Tommy he can, he, can, he is ranks he, in our group. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Uh, after 32 years, I still think he's pretty awesome. I can't stand him sometimes, but most of the time I like him. <laughs> so anyway, so I get to CVS Magazine. So I'm like big, you know, I'm 22 years old in Manhattan, you know, you know, we, 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 you know, live in Norwalk, it was an hour commute by train. I wanted to work in the city and I walk into this spectacular office and I look up and I see Ronald Reagan's picture with the man I'm about to interview with shaking hands. So I knew this guy was pretty important. So I get in there and I find out that he is the president of CBS magazine. Oh so my, my God. father had no idea. My father had no idea what this guy did. Just knew he worked for this CBS. <laughs> so we have this great interview, and you know he he you know he didn't know my father that well, but obviously I sold myself. And he said, you know, I like you. I see you have spunk. I see you have you know you have a drive to work. He goes, I'm going to bring you up to personnel. So he took me up to the head of personnel, and I interviewed with her, and she hired me for a job in the personnel department. So now I get the job and I'm working in HR. So I'm like, okay, this is great. So I was there for about, I don't want to say eight months. And, I, and it was a great job and I loved it, but I knew I wanted television. So what I did, my networking on my own, is I became friendly with the woman in HR over at the television broadcasting center. I'll never forget her name was Juanita. I can't remember her last name. And I used to call her religiously. Juanita, anything coming up on, the, on that end? <laughs> What's happening? Are you coming up? You got anything for me, Juanita? And then finally, she said, then she called me one day. She was Denise, I think I got a job for you. And it was working for the lighting director for As the World Turns. Oh, so God. now, yeah. So now I went from the magazine division, which I was lovely and I loved it, but I knew where I wanted to be. And I interviewed with the lighting director and I got the job there. So then I started working with him. And I would work with all the lighting for As the World Turns, the soap opera. And it was fantastic. So then I stayed in that job for about two years or so. And that was great, but it was time for me to move up. So again, I called Juanita. I said, Juanita, anything else coming in I'd be interested in? What's and I would look. They used to post back then internal jobs. And there was a board. I used to look on that every day. And I saw looking for a producer for the morning program. And... That was my next job. So I went there. I applied for that. And